Do you have a quilt that you need to bind quickly? Or maybe you just don't like hand sewing your binding. Or maybe you want to fancy up your binding a notch. There are several ways to bind your quilt with your domestic sewing machine. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Sometimes you just don't have the time to sew on a binding by hand. Or maybe hand sewing is just not your thing. Or it's way too hard on your hands. Or perhaps you just want to add a little bit of fun to that final step. You can solve all these issues by using your domestic sewing machine to put on your binding. I have already shown you the basics. How to make your binding, how to attach them to your quilt, and how to make nice mitered corners. I've also talked about wide and narrow binding, the adjustments you need to accommodate them, and making reference samples. Today's video is building on those skills. So if you haven't watched those videos, take a look at them first. I am showing you three different methods of machine binding. But first, not only do you need a domestic sewing machine, I want you to grab your binding clips, a quilting glove, and your walking foot. The first step in the first method is identical to the method shown in binding the basics. We attach the binding to the quilt by sewing the binding around the perimeter of the top of the quilt. How you start your binding, how you navigate the corners, and sew the ends together is all covered in that video. Once the binding is on, the next step is taking our quilt and rolling that binding over as far as it will go. This technique is similar to the finger pressing method we use when we iron our piecing. You want to push all the fabric over and not leave any slack. And then we turn our quilt over and using our binding clips, we overlap the seam with our binding. This is the quilt sandwich in profile. This part is the quilt and this on top is the binding and we sew it on with a quarter of an inch seam. We roll it over and it produces a ditch. And then we wrap it around tight and with a standard two and a half inch binding, it produces about a quarter of an inch overlap. And we'll need that overlap when we stitch in the ditch. So grab your clips. I let the clips do most of the work by putting the top edge in the ditch and I clip the binding on the whole quilt before I start. In the corners, I fold to the opposite side than I did on the top and use my three in one tool to make the corners sharp. And if you wanna make one of your own, see my video, 10 Sewing Hacks with Templates. Before we move on, let's talk about thread color. Often your binding and your quilt will be two different colors. The thread in your needle should match your quilt top as closely as possible, as we do not want the stitches to stand out. The thread in your bobbin can be the same color as your binding or contrasting it whatever way you want. Personally, in this method, I like it when the color matches the binding. Some quilters prefer to use an edge foot here, but I prefer to use my walking foot as I find it handles the multi layers better. You can start sewing anywhere along the edge of your quilt. Align your needle with the ditch. This method can be challenging the first couple of times you do it because you're sewing blind and you don't know if you're doing a great job or a bad job until after the seam is sewn. So when you stop and adjust your quilt, take a peek on the back just to be sure that your seam is catching the binding. When you approach the corners, slow down. Be sure the binding is tucked in properly and sew right to the inner corner. Pivot your quilt and continue. Continue sewing until you make it round the quilt. And when you return to where you began, I do a quick back stitch at the end and you're done. And if I roll back the binding, you can just see the stitching in the ditch. It will take practice to sew on your binding without this happening at least once or twice. When that happens, I just remove the stitches on either side, then roll the binding back over again and re-sew. Don't stress about it, it happens to everyone. And I finally get to check this one off the list. 
you might prefer the look of an edge stitch instead of stitching in the ditch. And that is made almost exactly the same way, except your needle is to the right of the seam and not to the left. And if we look at that in profile, you can see that the original stitching line is not encased by the edge stitch. That means that your original stitching line will be visible on the underside of your quilt, underneath the flap, but still visible. This is very similar to the first method, but we start by sewing the binding to the back of the quilt, not the top. But otherwise, it's the same. We attach it the same way, we do the corners the same way, we end it the same way. So in the next step, when we are rolling the binding, it's coming around the edge of the quilt over the top of the seam. Similar to the previous method, I like to clip the whole quilt ahead of time. This time, we want the thread on top to match or contrast with the binding and the bottom thread to blend in with the quilt. This time, with the binding wrapped up around the side of the quilt, we will be edge stitching to the left of the seam so that we miss the binding on the back side. And you can see it is not as close to the ditch as it was in the first method. I like to start stitching this binding in the middle of the bottom of the quilt. When I reach the corners, I slow down and ensure that the corner folds are neat. Then I continue till I'm one stitch over. I pivot the quilt and continue. When I have sewn around the quilt and I'm back at the beginning, I overlap my stitches, back stitch a couple, and then I'm done. And this is what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the back. And you can see that ditch stitch is not as tight as it was in the first method. And now this quilt is done too. You might recognize this quilt. This is from my video, Six Fast and Easy Jelly Roll Blocks. And this is Jelly Roll Block number four. If an even straight stitch is a challenge, or maybe just a bit boring, this is the time to take those fancy stitches on your sewing machine for a test drive. On a practice piece, try out a couple and play with your threads for the combination that you like. You can use decorative stitches with either method, but I'm gonna use method number two. I'm sewing my binding to the bottom and wrapping it around the top. Fancy stitches will take longer to do, but the results are fabulous. So what is my favorite method? If I am making a charity quilt, I use method number one. If I'm using the standard two and a half inch binding, this is really fast and easy. If I am using a narrow binding or placemats or a wall hanging, or I just wanna play with some variegated threads, I use method number two. But normally, if I have made a quilt for a family member or anything larger than a twin, I am back to the basics and hand sewing that binding on. There are still a couple more videos to come in this series. So if you have any more questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. Last week, I had Angie Wilson of Gnome Angel on Karen's Quilt Circle. We talked about her amazing 100 Days 100 Blocks Quilt Along that she hosts every year. And by the end of the interview, I made the decision to join her for this year's. I'll leave a link to that video in the notes below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And of course, my website at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.